Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Zodiac Bandit, and today we're going to be recapping episode 52 of Campaign 3 of Critical Role. It was super fun, I enjoyed it quite a bit, very excited for all the things that are going on. So yeah, let's get right into it. We start with Chetney, Fern, FCG, and Imogen in the Crystal Sands Tundra. I can't believe Matt actually cut the table in half, it's literally just these players at the table, two on top, two on the bottom, which did not think would happen. I thought, at most... He would move these players to the top or bottom screen and put the other players on the top or bottom, whichever one they were on. So I'm shocked they had just four players at the table. It, it looked empty and it was crazy. Uh, FCG asks if Imogen is the one that teleported them here. Uh, Imogen doesn't think she did. She she doesn't think so. She didn't feel the same breaking in her mind that she did last time. Chenny doesn't smell the others. Imogen is worried if they fail to stop uh, Predathos from being released. FCG says they should reach out to the others. Imogen sends a message to Ladna. Where are you? Are you still there? What happened? Are you okay? Matt asks for a D100 roll and she rolls a 98. Something blocks the sending spell and Imogen takes some psychic damage and there is no response. FCG tries Orem. He rolls a D100 again. 51. Uh, Orm, Smiley Day, uh, to you in a, we're in a icy tundra, where are you, are you okay, you seeing this shit? FCG feels the sending spell start, uh, but it fails, and they shrug off the damage, the spell doesn't seem to go through. Fern tests, uh, her magical abilities to see if magic works at all, and she casts Crate Flame. Imogen pushes Chetney with her telekinetic powers, she then picks him back up. Magic works, but something is stopping the sending spell. Fern suggests the others might be dead. Chetney says they can't think like that. It's morning where they are. They can't see Ruidus. Chetney does know where they are. Uh, they are in the Crystal Sands Tundra near Uthodurn. They're about northwest of Uthodurn. Chet used to live there. Uh, it's east from where they are. Uthodurn is all underground. FGG asks if it's friendly. Chet says yes, but he left on bad terms, and we'll explain on the way. They are probably a few days out. The party start to realize it's freezing cold here. Imogen tries to contact Laudna again. Are you okay? Are you alright? Are you in Uthodurn? And the spell shatters again. Scatters again. Imogen hates not knowing if the others are okay. Fern says they just got separated, it'll be okay. FGG tries to send a message to Dorian. A D100 roll and rolls a 3. Uh, Dorian, a catac cataclysmic event has happened and the spell is cut off. They realize the spell likely won't work no matter what they roll. The group start walking. Chetney leads the way. Chetney is no longer in his werewolf form and has a scar from where he was impaled on the key. The party moves around the dangerous area and are able to avoid any danger, uh, dangerous creatures that live here. Everyone rolls constitution saving throws. Chetney rolls a 21, FCG a 13, Fern a 7, and Imogen a 17. The weather gets worse with a snowstorm, and Fern takes a point of exhaustion. They're near the edge of the mountain by now. If they keep traveling for a bit, they'll be able to reach it. Imogen sees something that look, looks like it could house them for the night. Imogen casts Fly on herself and Chet. Fern transforms into a shoe bill. It's a stork like creature and grabs a large uh, shoe bill and grabs FCG. They fly toward the cavern that Imogen saw earlier. Unfortunately, as they get close, they see it is not suitable for rest. But past there a little ways, they see a cave partially filled with snow. They reach it and it looks like it's been unused for a bit. Chet lights his chisel and steps inside to smell around. He smells rocks, ice, and snow, or the lack of smell that comes with those things. They all go inside. Fern asks Chetney to plane ride to get them out of there. Chetney pretends to do it and it doesn't work. Chetney looks to the entrance of the cave and sees some movement. Chetney warns the others. Imogen casts Detect Thoughts, and for a second she doesn't hear anything, and then suddenly she hears something coming, and suddenly something bursts out of the ground. It is a large lizard-like creature, and it comes out of the hole and stares at the party. Roll initiative. Fern rolls a 20, FCG a 17, Chetney and Imogen both roll a 5. 
Fern is first. She casts Dominate Beast, but the spell has no effect that it is not a beast. Fern runs deeper into the cave behind an ice clump, ice rock. FCG is up. They spin their saw blade and rush toward the creature as they figure that they don't have any other of their up-close attacking people and someone needs to do it. Unfortunately, they miss their attack. FCG then casts Shield of Faith on themselves, or as they call it, Shield of Help. The creature is next. It inhales and a bunch of the air around it uh, is pulled into their lungs, and then they unleash a cold burst of air. Everyone but Fern has to roll a con save. Chetney takes 42 damage from this thing, and so does FCG, and Imogen takes 21. FCG loses Shield of Fate, or Faith and or Shield of Help. Imogen is up. She flies to the top of the rock. And lightning bolts the creature, dealing good damage. Chetney is up. He takes out Turmoil and lights it. And casts Shatter on the creature. Uh, also hitting it really hard. Oh, and then Chetney uh, lights Turmoil. Chet sees more movement behind the creature. A loud crack is heard from behind it. And some guests come out. Abria, the former GM or DM of Exam... Alexandria Unlimited, EXU the first one, and EXU Kaimal, and someone else that I personally don't recognize named Christian comes to the table. I, I don't know who he is, uh, but he was a fun player at least, so I'm going to look into who they are more later. Chet sees uh, Christian's character a rose gold and emerald Aoriton uh, with a coat, and one of their arms seems to be torn apart with a blunderbust coming out of it. Uh, they have legs. And they're about six feet tall. They're really cool. Beside them, at half the height of the Aoriton, is a gnome in heavy plate with a pink sweater that's been knitted. It's Fern's turn again. Fern casts Scorching Ray. She misses the first and second ray, but hits the fourth and third. Third and fourth. I don't know why I said that backwards. Uh, Fern then hides behind the ice block that she hid behind before. Uh, FCG is up again. They saw blade again, but miss. They then cast Spiritual Weapon. And it looks like Nick uh, Jonas, because FCG heard to hit it with something hot. I can't believe I just said that. Uh, the Spiritual Weapon uh, hits. Abria's character is up and asks what's happening. FCG asks who they are. Abria uses cast, uh, Mass Cure Wounds on the party, healing everybody but Fern for 30 hit points. The creature is up and it uses its breath weapon again on Abria and FCG. FCG takes 38 points of cold damage. Jesus Christ. And Abria takes 19. The creature moves toward Christian. FCG gets to attack as it moves out of opportunity range. Uh, Christian's turn. Oh, FCG hits. Christian's turn. They tell Deanna to stay behind them and then shoot the creature, hitting it twice. Uh... But neither of them get their sneak attack as FCG is not within range. They then action surge but miss the third shot. Which means they are a fighter-rogue combination, which is kind of cracked. Uh, <clears throat> Imogen is up again. She lightning bolts the creature, hitting it for good damage yet again. Chetney is up. He runs up and uses a blood curse on the creature and then hides again. Fern's turn. She scorching rays the creature again. Uh, she hits the first, hits the second, and hits the third, but misses the fourth. But this deals enough damage to kill the creature. Chetney begins to yell that they are friendlies, and the party meet the others outside. Deanna, the gnome, seems to know who Chetney is and is a bit scared by him. FCG remembers Deanna is one of uh, Chetney's former lovers, as was established way back in earlier parts of this campaign. She says hi to Chetney and then walks up and slaps him. Chetney says he doesn't remember her much. FCG uh, says that Chetney talks about the old days all the time. Deanna tells her friend to kill Chet. FCG steps up in front of the other Aoriton and asks if FCG is from Aor. FCG says yes. The Aoriton asks if Ch uh, FCG knows who D is. FCG says yes. They sold him to, or they sold them to Dancer. FCG asks the Aoriton's name. It's Frida. The party asked Deanna about her relationship with Chetney. They dated a few hundred years ago. The party asked Deanna what year it is. Deanna and Frida are confused by this question, so the party explained what happened and how they got to where they are. They ask if Deanna can cast magic, 
Uh, but before she can answer, they ask if she has a connection to the to the Dawn Father still. Deanna says that she feels less of him, as if he's leaning away. Frida walks up to FCG and heals them a bit. Frida says to Fern that they've never seen anyone like or that looks like her. Uh, Fern says she's never seen anyone that looks like them, which is odd because FCG is right there. The party asks why Deanna and Frida are out here. They were heading back to Uthodurn. Deanna pulls out a knit, uh, knitted uh, blanket and she gives it to Imogen. The party asks if that's uh, where Chet got his hat from. It is. This, is embarrasses, this embarrasses Chetney and Travis. Travis is just having a terrible time. <laughs> Imogen asks how uh, he's doing in his head. He says help. Frida asks Diana how she feels about them. She says that Chetney is an ass, but they seem trustworthy. Frida says they think Chet still has feelings for Deanna, but Deanna uh, doesn't think so because Fern's right there and how can she compete with that? The party choose to rest in the cave. Deanna asks them to try not to kill them at night. The party says they wouldn't. Deanna asks why that thing attacked them. Imogen says they walked into its home. Imogen thanks Deanna for keeping Chetney so quiet for once. Uh, Frida looks into the cave to see if there's a warm, useful shelter. She finds a rock deeper into the cave that has very little snow and has been a bit elevated, so it's a bit warmer and safer to rest in. FCG asks Diana uh, more about her and Chetney. She says it was a fling and didn't end the way uh, when she wanted it to, but after she met her husband, so it's okay. Uh, during the story, Deanna says that she was killed after Chetney left, which is why... Uh, Chetney looks much older than her, even though they're roughly the same age. She came into the Graying Wildlands and was attacked by a large creature. Her husband became an adventurer and found someone to revive her after 200 years, which is why things are difficult between the two of them, her husband and her. They ask if her kids know uh, if she's alive. Her husband knows, but he seemed to move on. And that's where Deanna stops talking about that for now. Fern asks about how Deanna and Frida met. Frida woke up two years ago alone near Uthodurn and heard Deanna's laughter. They recorded her laughter as it was something they seemingly knew how to do from their past life. Her laughter reminded uh, them of what they did in their past life, which was to protect, so now they protect her. Frida says D woke them up and they didn't know why. FGG asks if D gave them any guidance. No, D did not. Frida says that before they were okay with not being around, not existing, as they didn't feel sadness. But now that they are back and feel things like that, they feel like what D did was a bit selfish. FGG explains that they had sort of the same start, but they learned that they weren't here to protect, but they were maybe supposed to convince people that they were nice and then kill them. Deanna inside checks this, and then Deanna gives uh, FCG her sweater. Frida asks if FCG chose their name. No. The, their name was given to them by Dancer after one of Dancer's favorite smells. Frida takes their faceplate off, and on the inside it says Far Ranging Integrated Defense Aoriton. And this is when Diana uh, peeks in and says, Or Frida for short. Imogen tries to open FCG's face, but they can't find an opening. Frida asks if FCG has learned of Aor. They tried, but haven't been able to learn much. Frida says there's someone in Uthodurn that gave them their arm, their gun arm, named Jacoby. Frida looks at Deanna to see if she's okay with everything. She's not. She's not doing good at all. Frida goes over and gives her a kiss on the cheek. FCG thinks that Frida's legs are cool. Frida tells FCG they can maybe get legs from Jacoby. Chet says they need to reach out to their friends. Frida asks about the party's magical usage. Imogen explains they can't message people. FCG asks if people can see Ruidus from here. They can't. Or, they normally can, but right now they can't. FCG asks why Deanna chose uh, the Dawnfather. Deanna didn't. When she was brought back to life, she felt a connection and held on to it. FCG says they are connected to the Changebringer because they were given a coin. Deanna questions this. FCG says that being connected to this god gave them purpose. Frida asks why they need a god for that. FCG says they've always had someone telling them what to do, so it's easier this way. FCG flips a coin to see if they'll survive the night. 
and the coin flip is not that great. Frida takes out a coin that looks just like FCGs and eats it for symbolization that it's just a coin. Imogen is upset that the, at the fact that FCG follows the change bringer because they can't find purpose on their own. Deanna says they should let off of FCG right now. Everything's a bit too heavy. Frida thinks the gods are being weaker right now uh, is because they want to rest up for a while as they've been sort of up for thousands of years and need rest every once in a while. Deanna says this is all really heavy. Frida apologizes and takes first watch. Before that, Fern says that Deanna uh, losing some of her connection to the gods and the key being activated is really close and is a strange connection. Imogen looks out to the sky and doesn't see Rudus, but can see the white of Katha. This worries Imogen a bit. Frida asks if she's alright. Imogen thinks something's bad has happened and would feel a lot better if she saw Rudus right now. Before Imogen goes inside, Frida plays her laughter to her and says that she has a lovely soul and says they're sure their friends are fine. Imogen goes inside. Frida stays on watch. The rest of the group try to rest up. As Imogen goes to get some rest, she sees the markings on her arm have moved up, and her fingers are starting to turn red. The group wake up in their cave. It'll be a day and a half travel to Uthodurn. Before Chetney wakes up, Deanna adjusts his beanie and casts Death Ward on him. Imogen says for the first time in a long time, uh, the Hells have woken up without Orum doing something athletic near them. They all get saddened by this. Deanna asks if he's still alive. They don't know if he is or not. She thinks she might be able to communicate to him. Chetney casts Minor Illusion and creates a small bust of Orum for her so she can have more than just his name. She tries to send a message to him, a message of feeling of connection and love, but unfortunately doesn't go through. The party questions why it's not working. Maybe it's where Orum is, but the rest say that FCG tried to talk to Dorian, who's not even in the same spot as Orum, and it didn't work either. Imogen takes her circle off to try to hear something, and she hears a bunch of static. She puts it back on. The party sees Imogen's scars have reached up her arms and go up to her neck. Uh, Frida sees that her hands are turning red. Frida asks if, Imogen's connect if Imogen is connected to the moon. Imogen uh, tells them in her head that she does have a connection to it. Frida says that if Imogen needs to talk to someone, they are here. They begin to travel to Uthodurn. The party make a con saving throw and it goes well except for FCG and Deanna, but neither of them get exhaustion points. Frida notes that they don't have a uh, death ward on them like normal and takes the front of the group. FGG dings and gives the living people who can taste food uh, some biscuits. FGG rolled a natural 20 on the food and it tastes amazing and gives them one extra temp hit point. So they have five extra temp hit points. FGG asks Frida how they access the recordings they have. They say it sort of just happens innately. And it reminded them of who they were before they came back. Fern asks if, if Frida has any memories from before they woke up. Frida says they feel like they develop memories from when they're dreaming. They have the same dream over and over, and each time it expands more. Uh, FCG is excited that they can dream, but FCG still can't. And it has experienced dreams through Imogen before, though. FCG suggests trying to experience Frida's dream. Uh, they make a group stealth check after this. Fern gives Pass Without a Trace. And Frida rolls a fucking 39. That's insane. Like, that's just disgusting. Everyone else does really well as well, with the exception of Deanna, who rolls a natural 1. They don't come across any danger, and they're able to find a place to rest. Uh, Chetney goes over to, De to Deanna and thanks her for saving the party and feels bad for what happened, but is curious about what happened, meaning her death. Deanna says her kids grew up and left Uthodurn, and her husband didn't raise them. He left them with his sister. Deanna came to Uthodurn to see where Chetney came from, as she didn't get over Chetney so easily, and she keeps being pulled back there. Chet tells her it's a great place, and that he left on bad terms. He tells her about the woodworking trade, uh, Ulkar's toy shop. He had a good thing going. Until someone else came along and fucked it all up for Chetney. And Chetney stabbed them in the knee and ran. And was chased by the uh, glass blades. 
She asks if it'll be a problem. Chetney doesn't know if it will be or not, but it probably will. Chetney says he's changed, literally, but as he says this, she hugs him and says everything is okay. She says he's the first thing from her past that didn't hurt. Chetney rolls a wisdom save, rolls poorly, and feels a pulse of the moon flow into him. As the moon is full, he bolts off into the night. Deanna feels bad. She feels that she did something wrong. Fern says, nope, Chetney just gets the shit a lot. At this time, they hear a howl off in the distance. The party doesn't want to tell. It's not their place. But Frida puts two and two together and says that Chetney is a werewolf. Deanna still blames herself for it. Tension rises in this moment as everyone in the game is stressed out. Imogen looks over uh, her body more and sees that some parts of her body have the purple lightning on it that didn't before. And that other parts are turning red. Frida asks if they are in danger of traveling with the Hells. Uh, Imogen says they're trying to help, but FCG says they might be in danger as they are involved in dangerous stuff. And says that they understand if they didn't want to travel with the party anymore. Deanna says no and Frida says that they don't don't think they can leave. Frida says FCG is the closest thing to family that they have and might ever encounter. They ask how Deanna is doing. She's fine and is sorry for freaking out. They ask if they can help FCG. Uh, says not right now. Frida asks if Chetney grows when he transforms. He grows a little bit. Fern says, or FCG says in all areas. Fern says uh, that there are differences for Chetney depending on which moon is up in the sky. One is a bit more ravenous. Frida asks if uh, the whole party is affected by the moon. Imogen says FCG isn't. Fern says that she isn't, but then they all remember that she had a red mist come off her during the uh, Apogee Solstice event. Imogen thinks back to when the white came over everyone and how it felt. They were connected to something that uh, had been missing their entire life. It felt fateful. Imogen tells Frida and Diana that, that the people that they're fighting against are trying to remove the gods. Deanna asks who will, will, who will replace them if they are to go. Uh, Imogen asks what happens to you when you die and the Raven Queen isn't there to guide you to the afterlife. Deanna says that the afterlife and the gods don't cross over much, saying that the Raven Queen guides them to a place that was there before she was and one that will be there after her. Frida asks if you were awake for a thousand years, wouldn't you want to sleep? They keep them up, they being people. Uh, we should let them rest. Imogen says it's not rest, it's being eaten. Deanna questions the word eaten in this sentence. FCG says they're trying to protect the gods even though they don't know them or don't follow them outside of the one true god, the Changebringer. FCG asks if the Changebringer knows of the god eater and flips the coin and the coin says no, so they believe the connection has been cut. Imogen asks if Deanna tried to reach out to the Dawnfather. Deanna felt him uh, lean away, but maybe it was something like fear that he felt. They didn't. She didn't know that they could feel fear. Imogen looks up and doesn't see Ruidus again. Frida and Deanna now see that that has been pointed out. It's odd that Ruidus isn't being seen right now. FG says uh, they should move through the night to Urthodern, but Frida says that it's dangerous and they can hear Chetney howling off in the distance. And remember, they have to wait for him to get over his werewolf state right now. Fern suggests dream walking. Imogen doesn't think it'll work without Rudas, but they can try. Frida says they should go uh, to the temples once they get to Uthodurn to see if anything has gone wrong for them. FCG casts shared dream on Imogen and Fern. Frida says they're going to go out and look for Chetney, as he's important to Deanna. Deanna tells them to be safe. Imogen wonders if she should uh, look for, loot, uh, for Ladna or for the key, just to see what happened to it. FCG suggests Ladna, they need to know where their friends are, so she chooses Ladna. She is instantly pulled into a dream and is dragged by something going through the colors of the sky until they, everything is red. She sees a pillar of red going up into the moon Ruidus uh, that isn't moving anymore. It is stationary above Marquette. Imogen resists being pulled into the pillar. She looks up and sees the pillar is hitting Ruidus and sees a lattice gate being broken. She looks down to the key and sees a red storm. Inside is a bunch of people with red skin. She gets pulled closer into the pillar. Fern tries to grab her, but rolls a natural one. Fern is pushed from the dream and wakes up. 
She then casts Earthbind on Imogen in the real world. Imogen tries to push herself away from the pillar, but she keeps getting pulled in. It burns and she hears something say to go into it. FCG tries to grapple hook on the Imogen, but the grappling hook isn't there. They don't have a material body. FCG tries to will them both out of the dream, but FCG is just barely able to hold them back, locking them from being pulled any further. Imogen is 40 feet away from the pillar. She feels uh, that it's hot, and she sees things going up the pillar, and she wants to cut the tether. She thinks that she should go in it. Fern slaps Imogen in the real world and yells to wake up. With this, Imogen comes back to herself and does everything she needs to to escape. FCG and Imogen wake up. FCG says she was happy and that she wanted to go there. Imogen says it was an amazing feeling. FCG asks if she, we should have let her go. Fern is pissed and says there's no way they should have let her go in. Imogen wonders if she'll become one of those people if she gives in. Maybe that's what her mother is now. Imogen says Ruidus is tethered in Marquette. Deanna casts Greater Restoration on Imogen, and the, this causes the feelings of fear and worry to leave Imogen for now. Frida is outside the cave, stealthing around, looking for Chetney. They find a bunch of dead bodies, uh, leaving almost a trail to Chetney. Frida follows it, but takes a while to find him. Frida uses recordings of Fern's voice to lure him out. Chetney is hungry. Chetney, uh, Frida hears growling. Frida goes to a clearing so that they can see Chetney coming from any direction, and plays Deanna, saying that Chetney is one of the things from her past that doesn't hurt. At first, there is no Chetney. On a second play, Frida sees two eyes moving in the shadows. Chetney crawls out curiously, looking toward Frida. Frida holds a hand out and plays Deanna's words again, and then follows with it up with, I know you're in there, Pocopy. Your friends need you now. Chetney hears bleed, but Chetney can't smell blood. He walks out and smells Frida, looks into their eyes and tries to resist, rolls a 13. Frida rolls a persuasion check and rolls a 3, even with advantage. Chetney hears hunt. They both roll initiative. Frida rolls a 26, Chetney rolls a 21. Frida is first. Frida shoots into the air to get Deanna's attention and takes off back toward the camp. Chetney gets an opportunity attack and hits, dealing 8 points of damage. Uh, Frida dashes. Chetney runs after and yanks at Frida's leg uh, from, out from underneath her, or them. And Chetney attacks Frida, hitting again, dealing 8 more damage. A black liquid comes out of Frida. New blood for Chetney. Frida gets up and says, Bad puppy. And then casts Guiding Bolt from their eyes, but misses. They then run at Chetney. Chetney, uh, put off by running toward them, uh, swings again, dealing 12 points of damage this time. Chetney goes for a bite on Frida and holds them in place. Chetney's jaws clamp down on Frida's arm. The rest of the party hear the gunshot. Deanna takes off almost instantly and the rest follow. Imogen casts Fly on herself and Deanna. Frida uh, talks with Deanna's voice again, saying puppy over and over again and then changes their arm into their blunderbust. They shoot a dazing shot, but unfortunately it doesn't work. They reload and shoot again, but misses. Imogen and Deanna uh, see flashes down the mountain. It'll take two turns for them to fly there at full speed. Chetney slams Frida onto the snow with a rock underneath it. Frida is prone. Frida laughs using Deanna's voice. Frida shoots twice, missing the first, hitting the second, dealing 13 damage. Imogen and Deanna race down. Imogen uses sorcery points to double her movement and tries to cast Calm Emotions on Chetney. Chetney resists it. Chetney backs off because of the laugh and the taste is wrong. He rolls a dirty 20 and is able to resist. He looks down and sees Frida hurt and sees that he did this uh, to a friend and he lo lost control. He feels shame. He runs off as fast as he can. Imogen tries to follow Chet. Deanna goes to Frida. Fern transforms into a shoe bill again and chases after Chetney as well. Imogen and Fern try to track Chetney, but can't follow. He's too quick and stealthy, even with Thern rolling a, a 23 perception, still can't find Chetney. Deanna heals Frida for 45 hit points. Hit points? Why did I write hit points? Health points. <laughs> Same thing, I guess. Uh, the damage heals over, but the coat is still a little damaged. 
Deanna is pissed off. Frida tells them, or tries to calm her, uh, but she's angry. Both Image and the FCG cast calm emotions. Frida says Chetney is inside there, and that Frida went easy on Chetney. Deanna says she'll still rip his spine out. Frida says uh, he feels like an apex predator out here, and that he should be fine, he being Chetney. Deanna is shocked that Frida is so chill about all this. Deanna is upset that the party told them that Chetney is dangerous and both her and Frida said it'll be okay for Frida to go out after him. The party returned to camp and rest. Chetney wrestled with uh, the beast alone this night and Frida rolls a con save. They roll a 10 and the session ends. So this was a super fun episode in my opinion. I, I enjoyed it. I'm always a big fan of when guests appear so it was really cool. I really enjoyed the idea of guests. I am shocked they went an entire session just this group i was thinking at the break it was going to switch to the other group and we we're going to be doing this the whole time so to me i'm in shock that we didn't have marisha liam or Talzin for a full session and none of them are sick none of them are doing something else none of them are in a different country or different state or anything like that they're just not at the table they're probably in the building still in fact we know they were because they were there at the beginning of the episode and they actually rolled hit points for when they leveled up just recently. So that I'm shocked. I'm in shock. I did not think he was going to split the party like this literally at the table. And for most, I would say, don't do this. Like if you're a DM, do not split the table like this at all. Uh, just hope your players don't metagame or something like that. But for this, this is one of the few times where I think like this dimension 20 stuff like this is high produced stuff is able to do this. And like, it feel good still. Because they kind of have to for their product. Because at the same time, like, yes, they're good at not metagaming. But at the same time, there's always going to be that itch to metagame. So I, I really like that they split this up. Because, yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. I didn't think Matt was going to. I honestly didn't. So to see that they actually did. And I love, someone in my comments said they're going to introduce guests for both sides. So whoever that was, you hit it on the head. That was a perfect guess. And I'm super thrilled that you got that so right really jealous that you got that so right because i was like i think it's a great idea but i think only one guest will show up because i was thinking that the fucking table was full but instead they empty the goddamn shit fucking table out and they have a ton of room for a ton of players so realistically they could throw in three guests for the other team i highly doubt they will they'll only throw in two but yeah I, and i really like these guest characters first of all abria in my opinion is a fantastic player i'm not a big fan of her dming but i think she is a brilliant player I enjoyed her in EXU uh, Calamity. So here I'm thrilled to see her back as a player. And I'm not sure who this Christian person is yet. I'm going to look into them more after this recording. But I, they were a fantastic player as well. I thought there was a few moments where they were kind of like metagaming a little bit. Like with the whole um, realizing Chetney's a werewolf thing. But at the same time that character feels like mildly like, like, how do I put it? Inquisitive? Which might be their rogue subclass. So I don't know. They, they they definitely feel intelligent enough to put two and two together. So it didn't bother me too much after I realized that this that's the character. So yeah. I, I like both these new guest characters. I like that the group is completely separated. It was a lot of fun. This wasn't like a super high tense episode with the exception of the 1v1. Because that could have gone terribly wrong. But I also think that if you're going to do PvP, 1v1s are like the best way to do it. And have like other people swoop in at the end to sort of protect people. That is amazing. I really enjoyed this 1v1. I, I actually did. I, I was very tense. But I figured that at some point someone would show up and help. And luckily, due to a handful of circumstances, Chetney didn't kill Frida. Which would absolutely suck if that happened. That would have been terrible. But yeah, no, it was really good. And I don't know if we're about to see a werewolf robot Aoriton thing. But that sounds badass. So I'm very excited for... This probably won't be, like, answered for a while. And if I'm correct, next episode will happen. And then the next one is, like, a week off. Yeah. The 20, uh, 23rd will be the next episode. And then the 30th following is the last Thursday of the month. So we're not going to be able to see this group again. Unless they do uh, this group again next week, which I doubt. We're not going to see this group again until April 6th. So, geez. That's going to be a while to answer what's happening with uh, Frida. But anyway, I really enjoyed 
this episode. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely a come down episode from the last one, the high of the last one. So yeah, excited to see where everything goes. Excited to see the group next week, depending on who it is. I'm really excited to see where Orem, Lana, and Ashton are to see if we get any guests over there. It would be really cool and interesting. So yeah, very excited. See you guys on Tuesday for whatever video I decide to make. Peace.